Hi, just time from your Dino here. So today I'm going to show you some nice new features that we've got to uh, that improves support for canvas devices. And at the end of the video, I'll show you also some very nice improvements for steady state tuning. So take a look. So to get started <clears throat> to use uh, canvas with your Dino, you need a canvas adapter. So this is one very simple thing costs uh, $45 or so. Uh, it has a USB here and so you connect that to the PC obviously and then uh, you connect the, the CAN devices here and you can connect a whole lot many many CAN devices on the same box here. Um, CAN devices can be this one here is an example EGT2 CAN so that's exhaust gas temperature to CAN here are eight channels connect them here and uh, on this side you have 12 volts uh, plus the two chan can uh, signals simple stuff here is another example it is lambda to can so you don't need to use an analog channel uh, for lambda you can just use a can adapter like that again 12 volts plus the two can signals pretty simple uh, now another really cool thing that I'm going to show you is uh, a lot of aftermarket uh, ECUs have can support and uh, uh, they can also be connected, which, which we'll see, to read things like RPM and uh, ignition angle and stuff like that. Very cool. Let me sh uh, show you how you configure it. So before we do that, let's take a look at the USB CAN adapters that are compatible. There are two types you can choose between. This is one of them. That's the one I've got. Uh, you can buy them many places. Inside the CAN uh, plugin, there is a link. It takes you to this place. You can buy from here, for example. But the other one is the one I recommend, actually. It's this one called Canalyst 2. And that one uh, has um, aluminium casing. It has built-in resistors and just looks to be a little bit better uh, in general. I haven't tried it, actually, but it is compatible. The ratings is actually not that good. A lot of people give it a one star, but that's because uh, there is no software. They complain there is no software that comes with it. But of course, for us, we don't care about that because the software is included in your dyno. So it's just plug and play. OK, so those are the two, uh, the two options you have on the CAN adapter side. All right, we have connected the CAN adapter and the CAN sensors. So let's see how we can read them. You open the CAN uh, bus uh, uh, plugin and we select Canvas 0. There are two of them. We have connected to Canvas 0. Bot rate is 1000 kilobits per second and we connect. Okay, it's connected. Now we can show the debug just to see whether there is any life here. And there is indeed lots of packets. And we can see here there is an address and then there is lots of data that, of course, we don't understand when it is in this format here. To understand that format, uh, we need to go into Devices, and then here we uh, add a device, and we, we describe how what, what all these things mean, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so to do that, we need to uh, open the, the mod, uh, manual of the sensor. So here is one, for example, the ECU Master Lambda that I showed you. If you go through them, they will all have this uh, section uh, here that says uh, the cam how is the, the CAN data description, basically? Okay, so here is that. Let me put that here, and then we do that here, so we can see them both. So then let's configure this, this uh, ECU master CAN Lambda device. Okay, we do add device. First thing is a name, for example, and then the ID. The ID is uh, 664, but that is in hex. Okay, so that's, uh, for those of you who are not programmers, this looks a bit magic, but uh, just do it like that. This is 1636, uh, no, okay, 1636. Now, is it big and in little end then? Uh, it's hard to know. Sometimes it's described, sometimes not, so we just uh, leave it blank for now and we can we can change it. First channel here, supply voltage. A byte offset is zero. That's uh, this uh, number here. Data length is two. You can see it's two addresses. Offset, that's over here, that's zero. Multiplier is one. Divider is uh, 100. 
and unit is volt. Do you want to log this data? Uh, well, not really, right? The supply voltage is just uh, for interest. Uh, you can if you want, uh, but uh, no, we don't typically want to log that. We do want, um, we don't need to add all this, of course. Let's just do lambda. That one we do need to, <coughs> we do want to, uh, to log, obviously. And that starts on address four, and it's two in length. And the offset is zero, multiplier is one, and divider is a thousand. And there is no unit. Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, now we can see we have packets, so that's good. If we click on it, we see that supply voltage is 512. I doubt that is correct. But we just go and edit the device and we we can change the, the big end and little end thing. And now it looks, of course, much better. You can see it, it actually updates here right away. So you can actually see if you maybe you made some mistake here, right? And you see that, oops, we have 124 volt. I don't think so. So automatically it updates here. It's quite useful. Okay, uh, we forgot to click here. Okay, good. That was this one. <clears throat> then we can add the other one. This is the EGT to CAN, but it's similar. I'm not gonna do, not gonna show you. I'll just do it and I'll show you the result. Now I have added a few more uh, sensors here. Here is the EGT1 and EGT2. So those are the ones. Um, that's the EC Master uh, 1 and 2. Uh, they are defined very simply. There are four uh, channels on each of these uh, one or two here. Byte offset data length is all very simple and uh, we log all these data. This means we have now uh, eight EGT channels. There are a few other sensors I did too. That I'm, I'm going to show you how that works. Of course, now we can also uh, see these sensors in, um, in here. Let me do... Um, uh, that we see we have connected one uh, sensor on the EGT1. It's 23 degrees here in now in my office. That's nice. Uh, there is uh, the one uh, lambda thing. Uh, it, they all pop up here, right? Uh, when you have uh, entered new uh, new sensors, you, you can select uh, whatever you like here. Okay, pretty good. So here is my motorcycle powered uh, race car. It runs a BMW S1000RR engine, but it has an aftermarket ECU and this ECU has CAN bus support. So now I have connected uh, the, the CAN adapter to the, the CAN output of the ECU and the ECU sits under here. So now we can configure the channels and let's see what we get. So the ECU in this car is uh, from Max ECU. So we can open the, the tune program here and uh, select the CAN bus and you'll see lots, there's lots of stuff here. Uh, the important thing is we can turn on uh, the default outputs. Then you have a whole lot of stuff that it sends out. We can actually click the help button and it will uh, show you what it sends out. Click on this default here and boom. These are all the channels. Look at this. All this is sent out from the ECU and we can uh, read them all inside the Yordino system, right? Of course, we then would need to enter all these things, which we are not going to do, but uh, we can enter a few of them, right? Okay, so let's go back to uh, the Yordino system. And here I have added a few of them already. Um, so here it is max ECU1, max ECU2, we can do an edit device. And you see you have RPM, throttle position and lambda. You will find them back, of course, in this help here. Here is RPM. There is a same as before, right? There is an offset, there is a scale. Um, so you know, you see the scale gives you what you need to divide and multiply by, right? RPM, throttle position and lambda, that's on the first one. And on the second address is ignition angle, which I'm interested in. So I've added these uh, two. Let's see how I did it. 
back to your dyno and here is RPM, throttle position and lambda on the first one. We log this, there's the divider as we could see. On the other one is the ignition advance and you saw the, the address there too and you will log this one as well. Okay, cool. Let's see. All right, so let's see what we get when we have connected it. So we go to CAN tool again and we connect to the USB adapter, 500 kilobits. Okay, and it says um, connect. Okay, uh, we do a show debug just to see if we have gotten anything. Nothing yet, but I will turn on the ignition and you'll see. Boom! Okay, lots of stuff there. Actually, there's so much uh, that uh, <laughs> we, we shouldn't leave it on. It's 50 hertz and a lot of packets. Okay. Uh, so that's good and now let's go here and turn on the ignition again we see the packets coming here uh, we can look at uh, the first one here we have rpm zero total position zero if i change the total now we can see that uh, that works pretty nicely uh, here we have uh, ignition angle 10 percent okay perfect let's go to uh, a run make a run and we can start with uh, just seeing that the throttle works. Okay, cool. Let's start it up. Okay, so that works as you would expect. Uh, we have, of course, all the all the channels pop up here when you select gauges right i just did it already before i before uh, starting up this demo here okay. now here is another really cool thing we can do so you know we can turn on these live graphs right so like you see here so um, the rpm here is shown uh, per the rpm on the y-axis and this is time on the on the x-axis right so Right, you have all seen that before, but what we can do now, which is really cool, is to change the x-axis. Okay, not time anymore. We go to uh, gauge setup and then graph x-axis. Here we can choose now whatever you want. Now imagine we take ignition angle, for example. So what we will see now is RPM here versus ignition angle here. Okay, so let's see how that works. Okay, pretty cool, right? So here you see the ignition angle and here you see the RPM and times 10 then. Uh, this is really what you get, what you put in your, uh, uh, in the tune file, right? On your, on your ECU setup. Let's change the RPM back to time because that's more useful. And then we can play with some other gauges because imagine now you're doing steady state tuning, right? What do you really want to see? Well, you will want to see torque versus ignition angle, wouldn't you? Let's do that. Okay, we have a live graph and we say we want to go to ignition angle. Because imagine you're ex experimenting now for every steady state RPM, you're experimenting to find the best ignition angle, so the one that gives you the highest torque. That's not so easy if you are just looking at time here. So if you do now ignition angle versus torque, you will get some sort of graph that gives you the top uh, point of the torque and you can see which ignition angle this is and that's what you key in to your uh, ECU uh, tool and there is even another thing we can do uh, because this uh, ECU has a knock sensor so and that's also available through CAN so let's in let's take that here we have knock knock level and we do the same thing so we have a live graph and then we say no we say we want to see it versus the ignition angle. Okay, 
So now what we will watch when we do our steady state tuning at a certain RPM is what is the optimum ignition angle and at the same time we want to see the ignition angle where possibly there is any NOx happening, right? So again we have ignition angle here and we have uh, uh, the NOx level here, right? So you should probably do uh, an auto scale here because it's going to be hopefully low numbers. Um, so that's pretty cool, right? That gives you a very nice uh, feature when you do steady state tuning. Of course, you can do exactly the same here in terms of the torque. You know, you want to find what is the optimum lambda, right? You just do the same thing. You have here the torque versus lambda, right? You, you experiment with your, with your fuel settings, then you will see the same thing. What fuel setting, what lambda gives you the optimum torque? Okay, pretty cool. All right, guys, that's what I wanted to show you. Really loads of opportunities now with the new Canvas support. I hope you like it and happy tuning.